Welcome everybody who's here and welcome to everybody online. I'm Sandy Gardner, just in case you didn't know. So I had actually written a small letter that I was going to write to the whole community. Um, however, Ben and the rest of our team suggested that I should read it out to everybody on the stream tonight. So that is what I'm going to do. And it's in English. <laughs> <laughs> yes, English confirmed. <laughs> so in 2012, I planned Star Citizen's crowdfunding campaign, and I've been running the project's marketing in its entirety up until now. I remember staying up all night with Ben Lesnick almost exactly three years ago to rewrite the very first presentation for Star Citizen, and thankfully I did not do that last night. The kudos goes to the Foundry 42 team and our other teams. I've been surprised on a lot of fronts um, having done this project as it is my first entry into the gaming industry. And I can say with full conviction that, it, that this is the most challenging yet rewarding project that I have ever worked on. From being the target of an anonymous hate campaign to flowers and gifts and many compliments from a lot of our fans. So thank you to all of you who wrote me a a nice customer service ticket. <laughs> it really makes my heart and soul and spirit very happy to know that I'm doing something that means so much to so many people. Star Citizen is, and always will be, more than a triple A game, so much more. Star Citizen speaks to the pure essence of humanity and the purpose of human beings, and I firmly believe that this is why there are so many passionate people on both sides of the fence. Please raise your hand if you have made at least one heartfelt connection with another human being while being part of this project in any shape or form. Please give up a smile for one memory on Star Citizen that has absolutely made your day. <laughs> and, re <laughs> and recount an experience you have had that has made you believe in the power of being, some, of being part of something truly special and creating something great from nothing as part of a growing community with common interests. We are represented by 243 unique countries. 31,218 organizations. On the forums, the fans have created 260,912 threads with 5,593,512 replies. 1,622 comlinks published since October 2012. 1,406 citizen spotlights, 222 deep space radars, 232 live streams on the community hub since we've launched. Our whole team gives everything to deliver the best experience possible, and in return, we are both humbled and grateful to all of your, our passionate fans who respond how they feel that they want to. Some of you tell a friend, some of you give us fan gifts, uh, give us compliments and fan mail, and many other forms of reciprocation. Speaking for myself, I have cried on many occasions hearing fans recount to me how much I have helped change their lives for the better. That makes me really happy and makes the countless hours and sacrifice to the work <coughs> worthwhile. In conclusion, I would like to thank, from the bottom of my heart, our whole team and all of our fans for sharing this opportunity and experience to see our shared dreams come true.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but in in truth. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Sandy's group um, wanted to uh, surprise her with these, so um, they basically just uh, told me I need to interrupt, but we kind of uh, in the middle of the whole thing. But anyway, here you go. Thank you. Thank you. It's not like I'm not taking the flowers. <laughs> I just wanted to um, end with that, that I, I um, signed on to this project because I truly believed in Chris's vision and I really wanted to help him make this vision come true. And being his wife, as you all know, it's not a secret. Um, and so without further ado, the man who creates all of this, Chris Roberts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, welcome to Citizen Con. Uh, this is the third anniversary of us actually starting the crowdfunding campaign. Um, it's amazing to to be standing here and uh, have such an amazing community and such an amazing uh, team behind me and in the other offices around the world. Uh, so we thought it would be appropriate to start CitizenCon we normally do with a sort of uh, introspection of the past three years. So I'm going to play this, watch this, and we'll carry on. Welcome to the stage, Chris Roberts. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to build a universe. I'm going to do a PC game like the old Wink Man as I did, which was like, if you've got a great PC, this is really going to show it off. You're not going to be able to get this experience anywhere else. I'm hoping that a lot of you want to be in this universe, because I do, and I want to play this game. Main one on our main side, still counting cameras. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Obviously, we don't we don't have many people in it right now, but over the next. So in here is my office, and the, the idea is to try and have an open work environment so everyone can communicate and talk to each other. And, and then. It's,
this is the uh, inaugural uh, tent for the chairman. But congratulations, guys. You're deserved winners. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Around the Verse. This is our very first show, which we're very excited about. Welcome to the new office. Um, we are really excited to be here, uh, settling in. And what I want to do now is introduce you to some of the guys. Frankfurt. Uh, current office space. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Ealing Studios in London, England, and we're doing amazing things with both Star Citizen and Squadron 42. It's not financed by some big corporation, it's not financed by some big investor, it's financed by all of you out there. And I'm looking forward to showing you stuff uh, from Squadron 42 and Star Citizen uh, as we develop it. Today we've got 991,278 star citizens, so we're almost at a million. We have four offices and 270 dedicated staff. And if you actually take a look at the numbers there, you'll sort of see how we've gone from about eight people in December of 2012 to 200 and, well, actually 270 now. And you can see how we're increasing. Hopefully we're not going to carry on exponentially increasing all the time. Uh, but we've been ramping up to deliver the game that you guys have backed for, backed that we want to make, that you guys want to play. Uh, and so I know there's been some noise recently, but uh, as you can see, we have more people today than we did a few months ago. And even with some of the changes that we've made, uh, we actually have more people working on the project than we have ever before. And that's all down to you guys, because we wouldn't be able to do it without your guys' support. So we really, really appreciate that, because everybody that's on 
the team, whether it's here in the UK, we have 130 people here in the Manchester office, which is pretty amazing. If you saw in the video, just 18 months ago, they were moving in. And uh, I don't know, Aaron, how many did you have when you moved in here? Maybe like 10 people or 15? Six when you started. So, <laughs> and what we're going to show tonight, a lot has been done by the incredibly talented team here in the UK. A lot's been done by the new uh, team we have in Frankfurt and also the team we have in Austin and the team we have in LA. And we couldn't do it without the incredibly uh, just talented group of individuals we have that, you know, there's. I've been working with these guys for the last few weeks here on getting some of this stuff done here, and I, I, there isn't a more dedicated bunch of uh, folks. We're there every night till pretty late. In fact, I think some of the stuff we'll show later on, uh, Declan, who's one of our um, designers, uh, I think was up for about 24 hours uh, putting together. Um, but uh, not, to, not, not, to say, not to say that everyone should be up for 24 hours working on stuff. But when you're, when you're going to show it to the whole community, sometimes you want to make sure you show something really great. So, um, and we really want to, I mean, this is a game that's a game of our dreams, and I think it's a game of your guys' dreams, so there's not a single person on this team that doesn't feel that way, and if there honestly was someone that didn't feel that way on our team, they shouldn't be part of the team, because everyone here is dedicated to making the best possible game. And it's not just a game, it's a, it's a universe we want to build. So, there you go. All right. So, uh, we're sort of going to talk about the upcoming plans. The first thing that we're going to release, which is uh, um, going into sort of the wider test next week, is SC Alpha 1.3. Uh, and then it should be shortly in the hands of you guys uh, there afterwards. Um, so, it's uh, an incremental step beyond what we currently have. Uh, so, we've got a couple of new weapons. We haven't actually had any new weapons in the game since the end of last year. So, uh, you know, we've got a couple of fun ones. There's a huge ballistic cannon that's about size four and uh, a mass driver that's about size two that's really good for sort of long distance sniping. Um, more emotes, um, character loadout selector, uh, a bunch of extra stuff in Arc Corp, um, things like improved elevator and chat and AR. Come on, move. Uh, Buggies are actually now going to be down in Art Corp. Uh, uh, respawn, because if you kill yourself in the buggy, you're going to have to respawn. Uh, uh, we're increasing multiplayer, so we're aiming to um, try to get uh, significantly more than I think the 25 we have now, uh, more closer to 40 if we possibly can. Um, so the testing is uh, looking good for that. Uh, updated hangar lighting, which I think we've shown a bit. Um, better sort of networking, dead reckoning. Uh, and a whole bunch of sort of little uh, polished touches. So that will be in your guys' hands very, very shortly. And then the, the bigger thing is what we're calling Star Citizen Alpha 2.0. And this is going to be the beginning of the full Star Citizen universe. So we've sort of made a decision to put, so instead of multi-crew and instead of it being Arena Commander, we're putting you in the beginning of what is the Star Citizen universe. So at the start, it's just going to be around uh, Crusader, which is a huge gas giant. It's in the Stanton system. Uh, and in SE Alpha 2.0, everything's going to be in. So you're going to have the space flight, the EVA, the, you know, the first person combat shooting, social, and we actually have missions. So you'll, there's lots of different areas to visit. There's uh, something like currently 38 different missions you can sort of do. Uh, around it, so you'll be able to fight against AI or fight against other players or cooperate with other players. So it's going to be sort of a big sandbox for people to play around uh, in. And, uh, you know, it's sort of enabled by the large world technology. So just to give you an idea, the playable area on the large world map um, that we're currently using is 1 million kilometers by 1 million kilometers by 200 kilometers high. So that's well, if you just want to talk about square area, it's about a trillion kilometers. And if you want to actually talk about the overall volume, what was it? 200 quadrillion kilometers. <laughs> so to give you an idea, I think we were trying to figure out other games. The biggest game uh, that's, you know, that we could find online that was uh, said was the Elder Scrolls II, which is meant to have 161,000 kilometer square map. And then there was uh, Lord of the Rings, which I think 71,000 kilometer uh, map. And Skyrim's actually smaller than those. So 
Uh, in terms of layout and area, that's why we have the large world, is so we can put huge areas in them and play solar systems. I do realize that a full solar system is much bigger than a million kilometers wide, although on some level we'll do some compression of play spaces because you don't want to be, even at 0.2 speed of light, you don't want to be sitting for three hours like in quantum travel. Uh, but we're definitely, I mean, it's a huge play area. I mean, no one's, no one's going to feel compressed here. And that's what we're putting you in. The actual area around Crusader that we're going to put you in is uh, a portion of that, um, but still very, very big. Uh, you know, obviously, we've got the multi-crew technology in SC Alpha 2.0, so all the ships have local grids, not just the big ones. Um, so the 300i, the Aurora, you can walk around in them as you fly around. Um, you know, we have the zone streaming system. And uh, let's go on to the next one. Although I guess, there we go. So what are you going to find there? So um, Crusader is one of the planets in the Stanton system. It's the home of Crusader Industries. Uh, and around it, there are the three moons, Selen, Yeller, and Daymar. And we're, we've got those three moons in there. We have three large uh, space stations that you can visit and play. So Port Alasar is this where you start. Um, and you saw an early version of that in the Gamescom demo. It's being fleshed out and uh, will have uh, a little more polish uh, by the time this is finished, which is not very far from now. Uh, then there's going to be the security post Korea, which um, it's sort of what we designated as our FPS area to have combat in. And uh, so we'll show some of that. Uh, and uh, we have the Kovalex shipping hub where you can go and get, uh, you can go there, check out, maybe find some, some, some items or uh, clues, uh, data logs, and uh, potentially some missions you can do. So it's going to be a whole play area. Um, here we go, come on. So uh, we have uh, quite a few offline communication arrays. I think there's about six of them in the map. Is that right? Eight. I see eight. Uh, so and you can go and uh, part of the part of the setup actually in the Crusader setup is pirates have been attacking the area and turning the communication satellites offline, and so the communications have been spotty, and you have to actually go and turn some of them back on, and that will help uh, open up some destinations you can go visit, uh, as well as. Uh, um, you know, new missions you can do. Um, so there's uh, research satellites that you can use to look for new jump points, and uh, we also have a bunch of service platforms that will allow you to rearm, refuel, and repair. So we have fuel in the game, uh, and also repair and rearming and stuff. So there's a lot to do, and I think uh, I'm actually kind of looking forward to seeing what people do in in SC Alpha 2.0 in terms of you know posted videos on YouTube and Twitch and live stream. I think it'll be pretty cool. Um, one other big change. <laughs> there we go. All right. The other big change is uh, I think we've talked about this before, but we're um, adding a lot more modes. The uh, IFCS, the Intelligent Flight Control System. So uh, we basically have four modes. Precision maneuvering, which is sort of the low speed maneuvering, takeoff, landing, or for instance, if you're like close to a space station or you are mining or doing stuff that you would need to be precise movements and, and uh, you know, uh, control it so you don't run into things. Um, SCM, space combat maneuvering, which is the mode that right now that you uh, play in Arena Commander, uh, which is set up for sort of space combat um, in terms of speeds, G4 stresses, and then there's Super Cruise, which is somewhere between Quantum, which is really fast, and Super Cruise is significantly faster than what you do at SCMs, about potentially about 1,000 kilometers uh, per second, or 1,000 meters per second, not 1,000 kilometers per second. Um, and uh, on, when, you, when you're at Super Cruise, it's good for sort of running away, but you can't maneuver nearly as fast, obviously, because the G-forces are, are heavy. And then, of course, there's Quantum Travel, which we showed at the Gamescom demo, and you'll see tonight. And so those are sort of the four levels of travel. Um, certain levels of them, like Quantum, require fuel. Uh, some things like Super Cruise will require fuel. So um, you can, um, you know, you, there's just, there's a lot more you can do, and we need those different uh, variations of speeds in the IFCS because you've got a much bigger play area, there's much more things you can do, and we're slowly starting to bring in the elements that we want in the final game. So having said that, we're now going to show you uh, a demo of 
working in SCL for 2.0, uh, all live like we did last time. Um, so uh, let's play a little bit and sort of uh, kind of see all the things that we've talked about being all together. All right, take it away, Andy, and I'll talk you through. <laughs> Okay, so here we are. There's 64 different uh, places you can spawn in. There's sort of your habitats, or not your habits, your little sort of cabins. So when you join the large world slash SC Alpha, um, there's various different rooms. You use your own particular rooms. So here we got four of our folks here, and we're on Port Olasar. So I think we're going to head to the atrium. Okay, and so when you, when you spawn on the space station, you can go to these different terminals and call up one of your ships to be on one of the landing pads. So um, we're going to pull up a constellation. So we're all right, because, you know. And so it tells us what landing pad, uh, landing pad, how many landing pads do we have on Port Alisar? 10, I think there's 10 landing pads. So you spawn, you have your ship spawn, and they'll stay on that landing pad for a period of time. If you don't claim it after a while, they'll be put back in the hangar, basically. So, um, so we'll get, let's get our merry band of brothers together and head to the constellation. And the whole the space station is built out with access to all the four land, all the ten landing pads. And stuff so it's a it's built out in a much larger scale than we did on the games condemn did we go to the wrong door to get to the landing pad One, one, of our, one of our players is taking a Hornet, so we're taking a Hornet, and the other three are going to be on the... Uh, so I guess this is on landing pad two, and then the other guys are on four, which you can see over here. And if we look over here, we can see the guys walking out on the landing pad over there. The constellation. The constellation is almost done. It'll be done when we uh, ship this. It's missing a few little bits, but if you take a look, it's quite beautiful. So, as we said before, the constellation's had a complete overhaul. It's built up to the quality that the Retaliator is now. Whole extra level of detail. How about a view from inside too would be kind of cool, huh? Okay. 
Uh, we're going to head to this uh, communication satellite to turn it back on, which has been sort of sabotaged by pirates. There's likely there'll be pirates spanning. Yeah. Yep, so we're in hyperjump. So we move around, you move around here a little bit, so, so it's kind of pretty cool to... Deactivated. So here we are, coming up to the communication satellite. Scanning. Boogie. Oh, looks like there's some uh, pirates around here, so we probably should go fight them. So. Surprise! I know, it's a surprise. <laughs> it's a trap! Yeah, so this is part of the. Um, the SC Alpha 2.0. So there's various areas. So like these are AI pirates that would spawn around the communication satellite and disabled. Oh, see the Hornet just go past. Uh, there we go. Should we get in the one? Someone get in the uh, turret. Scanning. Okay. Stop here, and we'll show one other feature, which is allow you can go in and out of EVA in any vehicle, including single-seat fighters. So. So we'll head in here to. Uh, You can see him EVA right there. So let's EVA into the uh, communication satellite. Okay, so we've uh, put the comm satellite back online and we'll have some new nav coordinates now. So we'll just get out.
As you can see, the, uh, there's some damage was taken on the um, Constellation that we're going to go, and when we get in our ship, we'll go ahead and repair it. So let's go into the Hornet. Quantum drive activated. Quantum drive deactivated. And so this is one of the many uh, refuel, repair, and rearm stations that will be uh, in the uh, SE Alpha 2.0. Landing gear deployed. Landing complete. And here come the here come the drones. repair Auto mechanic for engaged. players Landing and also for deployed. the NPCs when we, uh, uh, as as the universe progresses, but short term this is the uh, the first iteration, uh, which longer term when you've got a, uh, you can earn UEC and persistence, which will be one of our ne uh, next milestones beyond this. Um, you could earn money doing missions and then it would cost you money to repair, rearm, refuel. Okay. Raised autopilot disengaged. So now um, we're going to go to uh, security port Korea and uh, check that out. Was this is sort of the uh, kind of dedicated uh, FPS area that we have? And longer, longer term, as we carry on building this out, we're going to have areas that you will uh, have not just AI ships, but AI, uh, you know, individuals on that you will also have fights with in combat and meet them and talk to them and do all the rest of the stuff. So as I said, the, what we're doing here is absolutely the foundation of everything that um, Star Citizen is going to be.
Quantum drive activated. This is the area that will be in the first release that will have sort of uh, weapon drops and stuff. So if you come here, you'll be able to get weapons and stuff that you wouldn't normally have, and then use those to shoot other people if you want. <laughs> or defend yourself, either one of the two things. <laughs> it's a big ship, you've got to be careful with it. band that was in the Hornet and uh, we can come around here we'll see the rest of the folks at some point coming out there we go and down we go there they come I believe there's a there's a data center in the start center of here that you can reactivate, which I think is where we're going. And it's sort of like a command and control point. So if you come and you control this area, um, you'll get missions and stuff. And so the idea is, when we have this running, people will hopefully come here and try and control and fight over the area. So, well, there we go. Here we have some people do it right now. <laughs> So we have four, four outlaws that have been playing by the four guys over on this side. Um, and uh, there's also some weapon drops around here, so hopefully uh, we can find a few of them.
and there's some recharge stations for energy weapons there, and there's some ammo drops and various weapon drops around here. Okay, these are the outlaws. Outlaw, outlaw. Hey, did you guys kill all the Marines? I guess they're gonna. I guess they're gonna steal the uh, constellation now. So we, we don't actually rehearse this. Sometimes the Marines lit win, sometimes the outlaw guys win. I think this was pretty much a whitewash. I guess it's all your bases belong to us or all your constellation belongs to us. Feels good. Oh. <laughs> it's a used dance. Here we go. These are the various destinations you can see. So there's going to be a huge amount of, just even in the first drop, there's going to be a massive amount of places to visit in the large world and play. So, uh, so we're pretty excited by that. We've been sort of playing this uh, the last week or so um, here in the UK. And it's actually kind of fun, people going, shooting each other in the face uh, and, and flying around and doing stuff. Uh, so, uh, you know, one of the, I think the big things from this is to let you guys know that we sort of decided that, you know, FPS is really integral to um, the whole experience. And so we're just, we're, you know, our focus is we're going to give you SC Alpha 2.0 with all that. Um, that's actually going to be, um, I don't want to give you dates because everyone gives me shit for giving you dates. Uh, <laughs> So let me say it's in the near future. We're, we're not very far away from being uh, content and functionality complete in that. So I'm pretty confident that that will be in your guys' hands in the near future. And in the near future, I mean inside. Soon. Soon. Um, so uh, there's been a lot of hard work to get all this stuff in there. There's going to be a little bit more hard work for it. But I think it's going to be a great experience. and, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone uh, fly around and adventure and kind of make their own little stories up. And then we're going to slowly uh, build out from there. Um, so, uh, a universe. So the other thing that we have here is, since we're just going a little corner of the universe, it's kind of interesting because we want to show you, because we are actually going to build out from that spot and build out the whole Star Citizen universe. Uh, we have the Arc Star Map, uh, which we've talked about for a while. Uh, and it's, it's going to start out on our web platform, although it doesn't look like anything you would ever see on a web platform. And the same setup, database, view, shaders, all the rest of, will also be what's inside your inside the game, for your skyline on your Mobi Glass, your nav computer, your hollow nav table. Of course, those will have 
additional navigation and plotting features. Uh, but I thought it would be great to have David Haddock come up and talk you through it. So we have David Haddock, our lead writer. Uh, who David and his team uh, and uh, Turbulent and um, uh, Gamerson, who have uh, been working with Turbulent in Montreal, have been building this star map and they've been doing an amazing job. So I'm going to put it over to Dave. He's going to walk you through it. I think you're going to like what you see. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Manchester. Uh, so Jeff here is going to Hello. assist us. Uh, is this working? In... Is this on? Sorry? Is this on? Is it working? We good? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've, we've sort of talked in lore a lot about a lot of the systems and a lot of the planets that you're going to be visiting, but we've always been a little cagey about how they all connect together and um, exactly what they are. So, this is basically going to be your first look at the Star Citizen universe. Uh, so, let's take a look. All right. So, this is exactly where you guys just left. So this is Crusader. Uh, one of the planets in Stanton, uh, and if you pan around, you will see that uh, we actually have representations of some of the locations that you were just at. So, again, you know, basically what we've been doing is this is part of the thing we actually mentioned, uh, I believe, on one of the ten for the writers about talking with uh, astrophysicists and stuff like that to try and make it as real as possible and, and use kind of scientific data and stuff like that uh, to make it as believable and yet still awesome and cool and stuff like that. So, uh, so this is a planet, but we're not just doing a planet in this game. So why don't we take a step back? Do you want me to uh, start by showing off the information wheel or should we go to some sure. of the systems? All right. So each planet will have basically, each kind of location will have uh, basically what they call the disk here, which will give you uh, Planetary information, which you can bring up right there. Uh, and also information on some of the landing zones that you'll be able to visit. Uh, and also uh, options that we will get to in a second. You can bookmark stuff, obviously. Um, basically, this is just going to be a way for you guys to immerse yourself in everything. It's going to be pretty outstanding. And you can also have routing options, which we'll get into in a second. Um, but outside of that, you can now see the rest of Stanton's system. So this is home to the four corporations that have bought planets, basically. Uh, and so you have Hurston, Arc Corp, Crusader, and Microtech. Uh, also you have Celestial Bodies. And for example, and also you have jump points. So you can see exactly you know, where these jump points are in position to the planets and stuff like that. And again, this is all very, we're still early on in this process, so this stuff will shift a little bit as we kind of figure out gameplay and you know, work with design and stuff like that. Um, but if one thing real quick, I mean, if we want to show sensors, if you're traveling through a system, it's helpful to know where to not go if uh, you want to uh, not get attacked. So we have basically three sensors. So this one shows you population density, so where are the areas in the system that have uh, life forms, basically. Uh, the middle one, economy, where do you go if you have stuff you want to sell? And uh, it's a sort of a universal number, so it can be illegal stuff too. Yeah. And, <laughs> which I'm sure none of you are going to do. Uh, and this is threat, so crime zones, um, places that you might want to avoid if you don't want to get into a fight and stuff like that. <laughs> so as you can see, it is absolutely beautiful, um, but again, this is one system and we're talking about a universe, so let's take one more step back. So there's Stan. <laughs> And that is everything. So here you can see uh, each one is marked. We have all the, fa the various factions, UEE, Banu, Vandal, Xion, developing systems, and unclaimed systems, which generally get known as pirate systems. Uh, and so yeah, this is basically your map. This is going to be the playground that ultimately is Star Citizen. Uh, now, systems are great, but obviously there's, you got to get to them. So let's turn on some jump points. Yeah. These are small ones. Any uh, small ship can use these, but anything larger can't, unfortunately. These are the medium ones, which again, medium ships like the freelancer can use. And finally, the large jump points. And if I just switch to 2D, we can see how this all joins together. <laughs> Yeah. 
And also, super fun, uh, if you mount over, you can see what jump points are connected to whatever system. Uh, so you can get a sense of basically traveling. How do you traverse this very, very varied and dangerous and exciting universe? So basically, all of these systems have descriptions. All of these systems have planets that have been locked down. So basically, you get to kind of wander around and see what the planets are and stuff like that. Should we try and, and plot a journey then? Why don't we, I, I think so, yeah. I mean, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so yes, in addition to this, which is truly awesome, they built in a system for planning out routes. So we're going to basically chart a, a course from Crusader and Stanton to go to Earth and Seoul. And ultimately, this is going to have uh, a bunch of options to it. So uh, right now, we're sort of working with sort of base AU distances and stuff like that. But you'll be able to decide, you know, if you want to take a safer route, if you want to take the most fuel-efficient route, or if you want to take the fastest route. You can decide how you want to get to that system. Uh, and the thing that we had marked earlier with the routing options on these individual planets, if you've been attacked 18 times in Pyro and you don't ever want to go to Pyro again, you can mark that system so you, your, your routes will avoid it. So it will take you around it so you don't get attacked for a 19. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we've got a route. We're decided, all right, we're going to go take some stuff from Crusader to go to Earth, and let's plot it out. So this is our route. Now, you have several ways you can do it. You can kind of step through it, a la like a Google Map type thing. Uh, also, we should show them a jump point. Yeah, let's take a look at a jump point then. Uh, this is the Magnus to Ellis jump point. And uh, you can see this little trail leading off of it. And in the background, you can see Ellis. Yeah, Just you actually can see where it's pointing towards, the system that it's pointing towards, which is really cool. <laughs> so your next system. Then we move on to Killian. And again, also if you look at the system map, you can see there's demarcated uh, the green zones and also frost lines. So we're trying to figure that stuff out so it becomes, again, kind of as scientifically accurate as we can make it. Um, so yes, this is Killian. This is the naval, naval home base. Actually, yeah. Keep Should I just skip us through to Earth now? Let's do it. Yeah. Go for it. This takes us to Earth. So with this, you also, like I said, you can, you can scan around, you can see landing zones. So we have the three New York, Moscow, and Shanghai marked out, uh, and stuff like that. And so again, I mean, this is basically just going to be an initial look at everything that is the Star Citizen universe. And yeah, it is super amazing and a lot of fun, fun to play around with. And, uh, you know, we really look forward to you guys taking a look at it. And we also just got to say to Benoit, Ken, Scott, Benjamin, in LA, Sherry, Adam, Will, in Austin, Rob, Jason, Evan, and Tony, and everybody at Turbulent, and everybody in CIG, this is big and contributing the, to this. And the game is on team. And the game is on the, team, yeah. The it's true. They did a great job. Uh, and this. Uh, it's available as of now on the website for people to play around with. So enjoy. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. Back to the presentation. So that's fun. That sort of shows kind of where, you know, we're starting in a little baby corner of it, but we're going to start fleshing out from, from there, building a universe out, allowing you guys to expand with us building the universe out um, because we know everyone would like to be playing sooner than later so if you wait for us to finish every single one of those systems it'll, it will be a bit longer than I think everyone wants to wait. Um, all right, on to our next thing here. Okay, so one uh, extra thing that we're here, this is something that was one of the original um, pledge goals, was a million mile high club. Um, so not everyone has it but some people have this and they can invite their friends uh, and uh, this will um, well, you know, you and your friends, you can get any elevator in ArtCorp, and eventually when we have more locations, they'll be uh, set around the universe. Uh, you've got a doorman, uh, you've got a main bar area, sports room, uh, uh, dedicated bartender, 
serves drinks. Uh, so don't drink too many of them before you fly, I think. Jukebox. Uh, and uh, you can invite organizations or individual players. You have your trophies, a big aquarium. So it's, it's just like another uh, location of real estate that you can do. And we're going to have that uh, by the end of this year uh, for folks. Um, so hopefully that will be fun for everyone. Um, and uh, we're going to update you on the joysticks. I'm going to bring uh, Carl Jones up, who's our uh, chief operating officer and our head of business development, because he's been working directly with uh, SciTech, uh, and he's a Hi. British uh, national. Great Hello. Pull these back. Hi. Here you are. You want to you click those last three slides since you know which ones to go to? There you go. Okay. Um, so, uh, hi, nice to meet you all. I'm Carl Jones, uh, Chief Operating Officer, and I take care of biz business development. One of the things I've been handling very closely is our work with our partners, uh, one of which, of course, is SciTech. And I wanted to update you all on the work that's been going on since we showed you the first kind of concepts at uh, Gamescom. So, we've been working with the team at SciTech, who I can tell you are as passionate about what they're doing as our team is about building Star Citizen. These are some really talented guys there, and they really want to deliver the best Star Citizen HOTAS and controller suite that they can. So already we've been making some changes to the early designs. We've enlarged the size of the initial HOTAS that they're going to build. We wanted to make it more stable, and we wanted to have space for more controls. Uh, we want to be able to really have a HOTAS, you know, that you don't take your hands off. Um, the footprint itself has also been enlarged so that you have a more stable right. Should I pull device. This, pull this out? Or not yet. No, 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 sorry. You tell me. Don't you show that That's yet. key. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, as you can see on the diagram there, we have some space for extra, extra bugs, don't you? Uh, no, no, Carl's tough. I'm not going to cross in. <laughs> Uh, now, as you know, the idea of the HOTAS is that we can split it apart and we can combine it with other devices. So if you want to play with a keyboard or if you, with a throttle attached, if you want to play with two joysticks, this should all be possible with a suite of devices. So they've been working on some specific technology to make that robust, easy to take apart and put back together, um, and also adding some extra stability so that throttle can stand by itself. So. I think that means I can show you this one. Oh, okay. God. This one. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Chase. Oh, this way. This side. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Chase. This side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is the new mock-up we have. As I explained, you can see this is going to split apart and you're going to be able to attach this to a keyboard. Um, you're going to be able to have the extra buttons on the front there, as you can see. We have uh, trackballs and various different controls that we're trying to use here for your aiming to make it as precise as possible. So it should be as easy con to control as uh, using a mouse or any other kind of controller. And then over here, we have our first mock-up of the suite working together. So this is with the throttle attached to just the numpad keyboard and with the joystick attached on one side, of course, you could attach it with the keyboard. We need the camera. We're going to have a, a display here on the keyboard, so you're going to be able to get game uh, information there. What we don't have here today, unfortunately, is a mock-up of the high-end HOTAS, which will have the OLED screen. There's quite a lot of questions still on setting this up and how exactly it's going to work. So after CitizenCon, we're going to be talking to you guys, getting your feedback on the designs. We'll have a lot of questions that we want your feedback so that you can help us build the best controller for the best space simulation. That's me. There you go. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Oh, yeah, that's, that's the, the picture with the, the suite. So yeah, it's actually really cool. I just I love the idea of being having the joystick and my keyboard and everything all at the same time. Um, Thank you. So thanks, Carl. Much appreciated. And I think the guys at SciTech have been doing a pretty amazing job. It's again, I think we said. Uh, at GamesCon, it was one of the reasons why uh, we chose them is that they were really keen to make something bespoke for us and. You know, like you can see it with the trackball and the joystick, so you get the best of 
flight control and sort of gimbal aiming control. And putting it all together just makes sense because you're going to be flying around. You're also going to be wandering around on foot, um, at, you know, engaging in FPS. So having a full suite, I think it is cool. And it looks awesome. And I can't wait to have a working version on my desk. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, OK, so just, we're just going to talk about a couple of things. Cross uh, chassis upgrades, I think, went live yesterday. So it just is hopefully going to let people chop and change their ships, because everyone loves to do that. And uh, poor uh, customer service staff end up spending a lot of time helping everyone out on that. So we, we automated it. That's another really nice thing that Tur Turbulence done for the web platform. Um, and hang on. Next thing is we have a referral program, which I think is going live today. Um, so it's, you know, you guys are, you know, we don't really do any marketing or advertising. All our stuff is word of mouth and viral. It's for you guys, uh, you know, and a little PR, but mostly it's you guys going out there telling your friends. And so we'd rather sort of make it a more uh, solid part of the platform. Um, so I think we've got a little video to show about the referral program. So we can play that. You, you can hear Benoit, uh, no, uh, Benoit tell you in his own words. Uh, about the referral program. Hi guys, this is Benoit with Turbulent, and this is your community and web update. Today with CitizenCon, we are launching the Star Citizen referral program. In this community, word of mouth has always been a major force in recruiting new citizens. Now with this program, we hope to reward players who help build this community by referring their friends. The way the program works is simple. Each citizen gets a unique account code. You can find your code in your RSI account under the referral program section. This is a unique code for you. Each citizen has one. You can share your code by simply copying it and posting it online or by using the social sharing buttons. When your friends sign up with your code, they become your prospects. If they purchase the game, they become your recruit, earning you one recruitment point. As you earn more points, you will go up in what we call the recruitment ladder and earn the relevant form title, badge icons, and rewards for each tier. The ladder does include unique items that can only be obtained in the referral program. You can always track your recruits in your RSI account settings. To make it interesting for your recruits too, we award 5,000 UEC for anyone who signs up with a new account and a valid referral code. This way, everyone gets something. We really want the referral program to be a way to progress without having to spend. Starting from a Base Aurora package, you can recruit friends to upgrade the higher end ships and equipment. We start with the first few tiers, but we have big plans on adding more reward tiers as the item, mechanics, and areas become available in the game. See you guys in the verse. All right. <laughs> so it's basically just recognizing what you guys do already, but um, you know we thought it would be it would be appropriate to recognize it, and uh, you know thank you for. I mean we wouldn't be almost at a million people if it wasn't for all you here in the audience and everyone out there watching this on the live stream. Um, okay, let's go on. OK, so we did say we're going to have one concept ship. Uh, so it is the Aegeus Saber. So you know we had the Aegeus Gladius, Saber, it's another kind of sword. And uh, one of the things that we've been wanting to do is because we essentially have sort of one main dogfighting ship in the game right now, which is the Hornet. And pretty much, as far as I can tell, everyone flies Hornets or Super Hornets. So uh, if they're doing you know, this serious side of the dogfighting, so we wanted to have a ship that was in the same class that could go toe to toe with it. Uh, and uh, this is a ship that's being built over here actually in the UK. It'll be something that you'll see around uh, in Squadron 42 and other things as well. Uh, and it uh, is a dedicated dogfighter. Uh, it's a bit more on the sort of stealthy fight and, uh, and agility. Uh, so, you know, Hornets of Brawler, this is kind of a ninja. Uh, so that's sort of the stats on it. Um, it does uh, have, uh, uh, well, basically four S3 guns, which is uh, uh, pretty, uh, two gimbal S2s, or you can put S3s on the wings too. Um, and it's got missile hard points. So it's, uh, I think, uh, going to be pretty cool. And 
There we go. We're also going to do a military ship sail to kick that off because we're going to show you some Squadron 42 stuff. So we wanted to kind of put you in the uh, Squadron 42 mode. Uh, and, I, and I do want to say that on all these ships, selling all this, uh, this stuff, you know, you don't need to buy the ship. You can start with an Aurora and work your way through the game. Really, this is a way to support the development and building this incredibly ambitious game. And so if you do it, we, we're very appreciative of it because it makes the game better. We put all the money back in the game, which we're kind of showing you and we'll show you some stuff that we're doing in Squadron 42. Um, so thank you if, for doing that. So anyway, there we go on the next one, military ship sail. <laughs> It just wants to stay up there. There you go. OK, and with for 48 hours, uh, to celebrate what we're going to show today, uh, the Amada Park, which will include the address. And when you see the address a little later on, I think you'll understand why the address. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy ship. First of all, it's twice as big as we originally thought. And uh, anyway, so you'll get to see it in a little bit. Um, so there you go. And I believe uh, it's $170 for the Sabre, just to let you guys know. OK. All right. So now comes the part we're going to talk about Squadron 42. Uh, so we want to show, uh, well, so we've sort of had some news art uh, articles on the website this week. They've talked about various uh, things that have happened in Vega. Uh, and, um, you know, the beginning of Squadron 42 uh, takes place right uh, where this attack is. Um, and uh, I think I'd like to show you a video um, of a scene that happens in Squadron 42 in the wake of the attack. So let's put the lights down and let's play the video. Gentlemen, this emergency session is called to order. Admiral Bishop, you have the floor. For 200 years, we have battled the Vandal. We have caught these attacks, raids, or skirmishes or incursions. But I am here to tell you that we are at war! Tiber, Orion, Caliban, Virgil, once human systems are but abandoned in the face of the enemy. The Vandal are at our gates. Weapons bared while we, we hide and cower. Retreating as they burn and decimate everything around us. We cannot let the tragedy of Vega happen again. We cannot give the Vandal any more ground. To defend this empire, we must attack. And we have to be committed to that attack, whatever the cost may be. We have to rebuild our fleet. We have to use the power of human innovation to reclaim these so-called red systems and strike back at the enemy. This will not be an easy fight. It will cost us and resources and credits and lives. Well, some of you may be asking why I undertake such a thing, and I, I can tell you in one word. Victory! For if there's one thing the Vandal has taught us, it's that without victory, there can be no survival!
So, as you know, I spent a fair amount of time here in uh, London shooting the performance capture. Uh, that's uh, obviously the result of part of it. Uh, I have to say that it's an incredible privilege working with people like Gary Oldman and the rest of the cast that we had, because uh, I think they're going to bring a whole another level of uh, emotion and performance um, to the game. Uh, so, um, one thing that we thought would be interesting, because we, you know, like everything we're trying to do here on Star Citizen, we're really trying to push the technology. So, that scene is 100% CryEngine, running inside CryEngine real time. So, we've pushed the faces, you know, I would say probably Rise was the best real time sort of face tech up until now, and this is sort of another step. Um, so, if I go. Here, so we're going to give, we're going to run you a little video that sort of shows the technical process of it, and then I'm going to start to talk a little bit about Squadron 42. So let's run the the video for folks to kind of see what what went together to deliver that. My name is Sean Tracy, and I'm the Content Technical Director for Star Citizen. We've been working on our characters, and more specifically, the facial aspect of this project for quite some time, so we're excited to finally reveal this to you. Here you can see Gary Oldman, Admiral Bishop, making his speech to the Senate. In terms of technology, we've built upon the already robust systems provided by the CryEngine, and have taken them a step further to really push the boundaries of what's possible in real time on PC. The high fidelity work that you're seeing on the facial skeleton, rig, and asset was done by 3Lateral, and really makes all of this possible. The animations you're seeing are made with an incredible attention to detail by Cubic Motion. My name is Vladimir Mastilovich, and I'm leading 3Lateral Studio. We start our process with high resolution scan data. These are scans of individually activated facial muscles, and basically each scan is consisted of several million triangles. This is a data set that cannot go efficiently in the engine. And each scan is a snapshot in time, and it doesn't have any correlation with any other scan. This is why we have written a tool that will analyze the surface of the skin and will find correspondences between each scan. Through this process, we are finding hundreds of thousands of correspondence points between each scan pair, and this enables us to produce blend shapes on any custom topology for these scans. Scans are then handled by our artists, who are examining for any unwanted motion, and they are putting it in context and modeling a constellation of hundreds of shapes that will then be used to produce a facial rig which is essentially a digital puppet of the character, which can then be animated and transferred to a game engine as an optimized data set. When it comes to photoreal characters, everything is important. Not only that character itself needs to look correct in terms of its shape and its texture, but it also needs to look correct when it's animated. This also needs to extend to micro level, so that skin stretching and the pore stretching, the blood flow in the skin, and even a tiny layer of fluid between the eyelid and the eyeball behaves correctly so that it maintains the illusion of a live character in a scene. Essential for doing this on a such high volume project is not only having a large team, but also having proper production tools. Essential also to solving this problem are our production partners, Cubic Motion. At Cubic Motion, we're responsible for accurately recreating the actor's performances using the face rig designed by Trilateral. Stage one of the Cubic Motion facial animation process involves analyzing the actor's performance. So that means tracking hundreds of points on the face, covering all the main facial features, such as eyes, inner lips, teeth, and skin creases. In addition to that, we capture texture information from the video, and that gives us this extra level of fidelity in the data. After we have analyzed the performance, we move on to stage two in the process, and this means solving the data to the CG character's face rig Every rig control has its own measure within the solver, and each of these measures looks at very specific regions of the face and how those regions move relative to another region. We can combine multiple measures, and what this means is that we can then accurately recreate realistic facial motion, like when you speak or when you emote. So let's take two examples of the solver in action. Firstly, we've got a funneling mouth shape, and this, is, this shape is essential for facial animation and lip sync. A second example would be the nuance that we can capture. So if you look in this demo video, what you can see 
uh, are very small eye twitches that are happening under the actor's skin almost. And you can see then inside of Maya that the solver has captured these and transferred the data across to the relevant control within the face rig. Once we have sold the data to all of the facial rig controls, we can then finalize the animation and then pass that data across to Cloud Imperium and they can integrate it into the game engine. The faces in Star Citizen utilize a combination of both blend shapes and bones to combine all the techniques available to us for real-time rendering. If I enable a debug overlay, you'll see a color-coded wireframe that indicates how many bone influences there are per vert. This is important as it gives us smoother and more realistic deformation. Recent updates to our technology allow us to compute this on the GPU, which means better performance and even more characters using it. At the same time, blend shapes are driven by the animation. Bishop uses over 400 of these blend shapes to accurately convey the actor's performance. We also use these shapes to apply the tangents to the mesh, meaning the shading is updated accurately as these shapes are blended in between. One more obvious addition is comprehensive support for animated diffuse, also called blood flow maps, as well as animated wrinkles. When used together, this yields a whole new level of facial performance. You can see when I toggle the feature, the change is dramatic. There are even more subtle uses, such as making the lips lighter when they stretch or darker when they purse. Where previous games on the CryEngine used a single wrinkle map texture, we have extended this to use one, two, or even three wrinkle and blood flow maps. This ends up giving us 44 different areas on the face to blend in diffuse and normals, making unique wrinkles and expressions as accurate as possible. You can get an idea of the complexity of this system through this debug view, where white highlights indicate the blend areas and their relative intensities. We've made other subtle improvements to add a bit more life to the eyes. One such improvement is dynamic pupil adaption, which causes the pupils to actually react to the changes in lighting. The animation for an asset of such quality can be heavy. Animating 200 bones and over 400 blend shape creates an enormous amount of data. We compress this on the way into the engine down from hundreds of megabytes to just a few. We do this compression very carefully as Cubic Motion has provided highly accurate and specific animation data of the actor's performance. This performance must be retained when coming into the engine. The facial pipeline within Star Citizen is well on its way and as you can see the characters push beyond where other projects and technologies have gone before. We are committed to delivering the most lifelike characters possible to enhance your immersion in the Star Citizen universe. That's just one example of the, uh, the level of uh, fidelity that we're pushing for. I mean, I think it goes without saying, I wasn't thinking that I would be able to do that when I launched the crowdfunding campaign in 2012. Uh, but as I made a pledge quite a few years ago when I said we kept on raising money, I said I'm going to take the money we raise and I'm going to put it back into the project and we're going to make the project bigger and better, which is true for Squadron 42 and true for Star Citizen. And so the level of the cast, the technology we're pushing for the characters to put you in the story, and just generally everything we're doing in both Star Citizen and Squadron 42 is reflective of that. Um, so, you know, just to talk a little bit about Squadron 42, um, you know, I would put it up next, just as a standalone project, next to any AAA, big publisher, big budget game. I am 100% confident that it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of those games and, uh, you know, come out on top. Well, if you like space games, that is. Um, so, you know, the original pitch when I, when I started this, I didn't think we'd have the money, was I was going to do something very similar to Wing Commander, which was, uh, some missions flying around in space, and then when you were back on your ship, you would have a couple of limited options of who you would talk to and go around, which was sort of the Wing Commander 1 and 2 model, and Wing Commander 3 and 4 had live action, but essentially it was the same format. Um, but, you know, since we've pushed our citizen and the tech forward, since we've raised more money, the whole uh, Squadron 42 design has gone beyond uh, that setup. So it's a combination of flight, on the ground, combat, uh, talking, interacting with characters, all in one seamless uh, setting and environment, all from uh, you know, first person at that level of fidelity. Uh, and I think it's going to be the most immersive of all the story games I've ever done. So I'm, you know, the, I'm, you know, 
Dave was the lead writer on the script. Uh, Will, also in LA, they wrote it together. Uh, it's a fantastic script. Um, I think I'm going to do a... I won't show that just yet, Dave, when we'll, 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 we'll get to the next day. Um, but uh, I, I really, you know, I think you'll get to know the characters in the story in a way that uh, you wouldn't have done in the past, because we're letting you go anywhere you want on the ship and interact with who you want. And the idea and the goal is to have performance and sort of facial fidelity that is on the level of what we have uh, with Gary Oldman. Um, outside of that, you know, we have, we, you know, because we've got the large world, we're setting Squadron 42 in a large world environment, so we're making it not just linear missions, it's also sort of sandboxy where you'll have optional missions you can do besides the narrative for the story, so there's going to be a vast amount of gameplay. I mean, we're very confident. Let's so go to the... Um, be a lot more content than any of my past Wing Commanders and what we were originally um, thinking in the beginning. So just to give you an idea, um, you know, we capture, we got a, we're going to have about over 10 hours of final performance capture. I think we did about 120 hours or so uh, of the shoot, but of course you edit that down. It's about 10 hours of final. So to give you an idea, Wing Commander 3 had about 3 hours and 17 minutes and uh, Wing Commander 4 had about 4 hours and 13 minutes. So we're over twice the amount of scenes and performance that you had in Wing Commander 4. Um, facial animation is all being done using the pipeline that we just showed. Uh, I'm uh, going to show you something in a little bit which is earlier, much more work in progress. Uh, but, you know, the Gary Oldman is the... He's the sort of gold standard. So all the main cast are done to his fidelity level. Uh, and then the secondary cast are just a slight tab below them, but they have most of the same features, so they're going to have animated diffuse and all the wrinkle maps and stuff like that. Um, so we have this sort of dynamic conversation and reputation system. It's also a system that we will take across and use inside the persistent universe, and we're doing some stuff for Star Citizen that leverages off this that will allow you not only to sort of do sort of missions that other people give you or other AI, but also have sort of story missions and more kind of adventure interactions in the persistent universe, and that will kind of come out of the story uh, conversation system we're doing for Squadron 42. Um, and, uh, you know, I think one of the big keys was, one of the reasons why we have about 10 hours uh, of scenes, which is obviously a lot more than you would have in any kind of movie, is normally in a film you just stay with the main characters and the main action, but since this is your experience, we don't know what you're going to do. We don't know who you're going to choose to talk to, what you're going to do aboard the ship. So we, we went and actually spent time with every one of the secondary characters, and they have their own stories, and they, have, you know, they can tell you about their hopes and dreams, and they all have arcs. And so the idea from an emotional standpoint is that you hopefully, as a player, will sort of pick and choose who you want to interact with, who you like, who you'll talk with, and then when things happen in the story of Squadron 42, because obviously it's a fairly boring story if nothing happens, uh, and you know, uh, things happen to people, you'll actually have more of an emotional connection than you would traditionally do in a game, because we're allowing you to sort of pick and choose who you're going to interact and uh, sort of spend time with. So uh, I think that's going to be... Um, pretty good, and you can sort of define who you are through, who you, through your actions and interactions. Um, so, so I'm going to show you a little video uh, of kind of just a shoot for the behind the scenes to sort of set up what uh, we will demo right after this. So here we go. Oops, go back on that. Motion capture is just the body, um, you know, like the head position, but it's not the, the facial, not the performance. So all the stuff that we're shooting on performance capture is all the performance in Squadron 42. So the dramatic scenes, you know, people's dialogue, and so we capture their motions and um, you know, what they're saying and what's happening on their face to map it all onto their sort of di digital 
alter egos inside the, the world of Squadron 42. And we'll be doing that here in the Imaginarium stage uh, at Ealing Studios uh, for the next three months. My name is Ian Duncan and I'm, uh, I'm playing the player. So everything's from uh, my point of view and all the interactions that every character has, it's, um, it's with, my, with my character. Kind of cool and different, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I'm getting my markers on my head and my body. No, I'm getting markers on my body and a camera on my head. Yes. We wear the cameras and the headgear so it captures the performance. Regular every day at work. We've got this helmet on our heads that actually films in really little close-ups. I mean, you can't really get much closer than this. It's going to pick up every single feature of ours. All those other many, many cameras and gizmos capture the, the physicality. I don't know, 50, 60 or so cameras. I'm just picking up a number there. I did mocap last time five years ago, and it's already evolved. I think kind of pretty sexy. <laughs> and that's why I'm here. And I go, oh, thanks, scan down. Just check. <laughs> that's the money shot. Because <laughs> everyone looks very odd. <laughs> Wearing, like, you know, all in one very uh, suits that don't leave much to the imagination. You feel very self conscious, but the, uh, the trick is obviously to lose that self consciousness and just kind of be yourself within the space and play the character within the space. A bit like being in a theatre workshop. It's all in your mind. Hold the famous Squadron 42. Yeah, it's like make believe. Yeah, it's like being five again. Yeah, it's like being five again. <laughs> Whoa! Mental, physical training's been pretty intense. Um, I sat and had a cup of tea this morning and then came here. <laughs> so you have to go through a series of 90-plus expressions, ranging from frowning, smiling, looking up, looking down, left, right. And uh, the combination of all those things mean that they can then control the way that you look digitally. First time you do it, it, it can feel very weird. It's quite a test. I love it. I, I feel very at home here. From what I gather, Chris is a bit of the sort of George Lucas of this stuff. Really putting you in the game in a way that we don't have right now. Where you have uh, emotional connections with characters. In the old days when I did Wing Commander, I felt like we sort of advanced uh, sort of cinematic storytelling in games back then. Uh, and I think, you know, our cast is something that you would even have, you would have in a movie, definitely. Um, in a way that you don't normally see in games, which is pretty cool. Yeah. He's kind of the charming, famous one. What took you guys so long? You almost missed all the fun. I want you to hear this, sit down. We had Liam Cunningham this morning, uh, who's playing Captain White. I think Bishop's gonna be a great character. Uh, Gary's awesome to work with, and you know he's bringing a lot of nuances to it. Some of you may ask him why I undertake such a thing. I can tell you in one word. Victory! Kid, you better be on your way! A little bit starstruck. <laughs> it's like an extra level of nerdy geek out. EVA back to your ship. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were going through a list of actresses that we thought uh, would be believable as Gary's daughter. Jillian was my top choice. <laughs> we'll handle it exactly the way you did on the X-Files. She's great. She's tough. She's awesome. Um, she definitely holds her own. We got Harry Tread away, he was amazing. I think we're getting drunk before we even start work, so it's a good day at work. Oh, this is uh, Space Whiskey. It's uh, 5,000 euros. Yeah, single malt. <laughs> it's just been a really joyous experience. Yeah, I mean, working with all the, the A-listers was just amazing. The fact that uh, I got to be in every single scene was, was a real, real honor. Cast and Chris have done an unbelievably great job. It's going to kick other games in the ass. The message to fans would be that thank you for enabling us to do something at this level. Uh, what we shot here was way, 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 way beyond what initially I thought I would be able to do. So I know it's hard to wait, but tr trust me, it'll be something that uh, I think you'll be glad that you supported. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I'm pretty excited to see it sort of come alive. It's going to be a cracker. Yeah. And I think, Dave, you want to bring up the scripts? I, I thought, we thought it, it should be a good, uh, like a good prop. We didn't actually print everything out because we don't want to waste all the paper. Uh, but I wanted to sort of show you the difference between 
Okay, so this is outline. This is this is actually is outline the script, um, but uh, it's 116 pages. So this is like a normal film script you normally shoot, and then uh, you know this is essentially what Wing Three was, Heart of the Tiger. As you can see, it's a lot thicker because you have obviously a lot more options. And then this was Wing Four, which was a little longer than Wing Three, but not significantly. I think it was about 411 pages versus 324, and then. That's what we shot for Squadron 42. And that was, that was all, that's all enabled by you guys. So, I don't know if I could do the, like that, bam. Um, so, sorry Dave, I should have picked that up. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so, uh, there's going to be a massive amount of game, um, which is obviously why it's going to take a little longer than we originally thought. But I think it will be worth the wait because uh, you know we've got an incredibly talented team here in the UK. They are leading uh, Squadron 42, uh, and I know, I'm, I'm always blown away by the work and the attention to detail. I think you've seen a lot of it, like in. The Gladius and the Retaliator, the UK team has been doing an amazing job in Squadron 42 is, is sort of their, one of their main missions, they're also helping out on most of the other uh, parts of the game, including sort of Star Citizen, SE Alpha 2.0, and the FPS side. Um, so what we thought we would do here is we're going to do it, we're going to show it uh, uh, early part of Squadron 42 where you first transfer onto your First posting, which is uh, Idris Corvette, uh, or Frigate, sorry, I'm back. Idris Frigate. I know, we upgraded it, went from like whatever it was, 100 and something meters to 250. It's quite big, as you'll see. Uh, and this is actually where you first arrive on uh, the ship. Uh, this is all running in real time in the engine. There's a few performance issues. Also, I want to call out that the character, so the, the, what you saw with Gary Oldman is where it's going to be at with the main characters and the secondary characters will be fairly close to that. So what we have here is sort of some of the characters, but they're not finished off. They don't have all the diffuse maps. They don't have, uh, you know, some of the love that Gary had because Gary was sort of our proof of concept to push it. Uh, but it's to show you interacting, moving around, some of the concepts of the conversation stuff. Uh, there will be some glitches and stuff. This is, this is the thing that started us a little late, that we had a break with the build, and so that's why we rushed here a little late, and that's why we didn't exactly start on time. Uh, but I think it will give you a good idea of what it's going to feel like uh, just being part of Squadron 42, being on a ship. Um, you know, it'll be, for me, it'll be a whole other level beyond what you've been able to do in Wing Commander. You'll be able to wander around, talk, make friends, do what you like, and the actors that you've seen that we were performance capturing, you know, we do the full 3D uh, scan of their faces, bring it into the game, capture their performances, and instead of watching something passively like you would have done in Wing 3 or Wing 4, you're actually there in the scene talking to them, moving around them, and they will react to you. So uh, the last bit of caveat is that you know we have a whole bunch of next stage sort of AI in terms of uh, what we call subsumption. I think we've talked about about having their own sort of schedules. There's some very rudimentary beginning bits in here, but it's nowhere close to where it's going to be when it's finished. Also in terms of uh, them reacting or tracking you, uh, there's some technology that we're still working on that isn't in here that will make that much better and lifelike. So this is a, imagine this is a sort of very first stage uh, and will be a lot closer in terms of the fidelity to what you saw with Gary. Not quite to the Gary fidelity all the time, because obviously that's a dedicated cinematic scene, but the, the, that's kind of the quality. All the tier zero characters, so like Mark Hamill, Mark Strong, uh, you know, all the cast we mentioned there are what we call tier zero, and they're the ones that have the 40,000 polygon faces with the uh, three sets of wrinkle maps and diffuse maps, and so that's the Gary level. Then the tier one characters have two sets of wrinkle maps and diffuse maps, and their faces are like 10 or 12,000 polys. Um, but they look pretty good. I mean, so to give you an idea, the Rise faces were about 10,000 faces or something. And they didn't have the extra set of wrinkle maps or the diffuse map. The diffuse map's what happens when you scrunch and your face gets more red and stuff like that. Uh, and so that actually will make a big difference for some of the stuff 
Uh, that I even show here, because if you're, say, pale skin, that makes a bigger difference than if you're dark skin. Having said that, let's uh, show the Maro tour. So you ready, Liam, back here? OK, here we go. And I will, I will warn you, there are some dialogue sync issues in a part of this, but here we go, let's watch it. must be the new pilot. Jeez, they really got you jammed in here, huh? Welcome to the Stanton. I'm Eugene Morrow, Mom, Chief get Engineer. Out of the way. What's the number on that one? This one's ID 523R6. Okay, got it. Seriously, Moro? I'll tell you when we find your converters. You? Lieutenant Commander Kelly wants you to report to the briefing room? Jeez, Webb. That's how you welcome someone aboard. You're not even going to introduce yourself. I'm Petty Officer Webster, Chief Mechanic. You should go to the briefing room. You're hopeless, Webb. I'm Webb. busy. I'm heading to engineering. I can give yeah. you the tour. He has a map. He'll be fine. Tour sounds great. Great! It'll only take two seconds. I'll wait for you by the stairs. All good. So you think they're gonna last longer than a heater? <laughs> Anybody will last longer than a heater. Old man hated heater. Question is, will they last longer than mobile? <laughs> well, standard bet. You're on. <laughs> I want to steal. First time last week. The only person I ever see her hang out with is Kelly, and I'm pretty sure all they talk about is work. Anyway.
this is flight control. And this gentleman here is the one and only flight operator, Aaron Sito. Hey, new pilot, right? I'm sure you'll hear this all day, but welcome aboard the Stanton. I'm going to be the voice in your head while you're flying. Don't you worry, though. I'll be gentle. Oh, did you hear about Claude? He's on PD. What did he hear? No idea, but apparently he really ticked off Kelly. Oh, Connie's not going to believe this. Fly hops. Fly hops, this is AV1. Come back. Better go. AV1, this is Flight Ops. I've got you. Just waiting for some traffic to clear the deck, but we can we better get out of his hair. Next stop, the main deck. Zito's was great. But a bit of a gossip. Don't tell him anything you don't want the whole crew to know. Rumour has it that's why his ex left. But he's probably better off. Told me she had a gambling problem. <laughs> You've seen Luther since you got back. Hey, okay. why? Why? Quite a short. Yeah. What did he do? Try to figure out a new way to minimise power leaks, or did he go real crazy and run simulations on the latest conduit systems? He got banned from Tasha's bar. Top. Prepare yourself, my son. This. And here's the mess hall. Hey, everyone. This is a new pilot. Yeah, barracks in the heads through here too. Yeah, chow's pretty good. Never try the lamb, no matter what anyone tells you. Prepare to your handbooks for a complete list of contraband items. Have your declarations ready. Did you get the converters? White wants an ETA on that relay. Right. Uh, I might need you to grab them from Webb while I finish taking a new pilot to the briefing room. Connie, new pilot. New pilot, Starman Connie Hayes. The Morrow Experience Tour. Lucky you. <laughs> I'll go speak to her. Ah, you're the best, Connie. Oh, remind me to tell you about Claude later. I'm sure you will. The Stanton's been in service for a while now. Keeps us engineers busy. But I guess it's a hell of a lot more interesting than serving on a new ship where hardly anything needs fixing. Actually, little known fact. Back when Captain White was a starman, his first assignment was on the Stanton. When he got his commission later on, he requested her special. As you can, as you can see, the... Uh... The address is quite a big ship. <laughs> hey, Joaquin! You hear Claude's on punishment detail again? Apparently Kelly said this is his last chance. Oh, what do you do? I'll tell you about it later, after finish giving the new pilot a tour. Hey, you two haven't formally met yet, right? Star man, watch from Stagger, sir. Hey, I better get this to the dock. I want to hear the rest. Kim's a great guy. Amazing to think he was feeding on Widow a few years ago. It's running hot. There's something in this. The junction, right? But for some reason, it's spilling. This is me. But if you just keep heading straight on, uh, round the bend and on the left is the briefing room. Uh, check your mobile if you get lost. And feel free to swing by later if you get some time. So, well, let's go, let's show the engine room here if we can. That'd be kind of cool. That's Thanks actually a pilot. I think we're going to be best friends. <laughs> by the way, if, if, you, if you haven't figured it out, Morrow's the gossip aboard the ship. So, so this is sort of the, the level of attention to detail inside the Idris, which also is, by the way, the Idris everyone will fly in the uh, persistent universe. And uh, this has been uh, built by Nathan Disley and uh, his team uh, at uh, Squadron uh, Foundry 42, not Squadron 42. Um, 
So a whole bunch of really talented uh, vehicle artists have all been working, building uh, the Idris. I think this is one of the airlocks that goes to the outside. There. Now, Captain White likes to meet everybody who comes aboard his ship, but I wanted to have a quick word first. So why don't you take a seat? Little history lesson. Sealed in 2872, the Stanton is an Aegeus Idris class frigate. She served with the 351st Battle Group for almost six decades before transferring to the 87th Battle Group ten years ago. In our last two assignments, we've gone from rescue and disaster relief in Ferran to perimeter sweeps along the Jeanne Front. We handle all sorts of theatres, all sorts of situations. Now, some people have got big dreams of thrashing duel out with Bishop and think a post like this isn't worth their time that this is a joke assignment. So I tell every new transfer this only once. We may be a small crew, but the work we do matters. And if you don't respect that, I'll make sure you spend your career scrubbing decks in the darkest corner of the Empire. Let's not keep the captain waiting. All right, so, uh, that's actually, uh, that's actually a very small part of the, to like, when you first land, there's actually quite a few more uh, vignettes um, that happen along that tour. Um, this is sort of the, uh, we use the tour as to develop all the sort of AI and, uh, put the characters in. Just to let you know, uh, we don't have, none of, the, none of the hair was final. Most of those faces aren't even close to final. We've just, we have him in to work with the stuff. It's gonna be a whole nother level uh, beyond that. So for instance, uh, uh, you know, Executive Officer Kelly, who's talking to you at the end, uh, played by Rona Mitra, is a tier zero character. So she's, she will be completed to the level that you saw Gary Oldman in the, the cinematic we've done. Uh, so, uh, it will go much further. We just did, this is the stuff that we had at the stage of development because once we finished shooting and had it rigged and three lateral work on it and cubic work on it, it's a very long process for them to deliver that kind of quality. Uh, but we wanted to get it in. We wanted to sort of show you guys kind of where it's going to go. Uh, it's going to look much better. There's a lot of like details of uh, how the AI works and there's some uh, procedural like looking around and tracking stuff that isn't in right now that can take, as you saw like when they were showing the tech video on the puppet, the face puppet, you can move the head around and it'll all work properly. So there's some level of kind of uh, AI sort of real-time rig manipulation that isn't in yet that will allow those characters to sort of track you. So if you walk around them, they'll turn their heads and look at you and be much more realistic. And every one of the characters has a whole set of conversations they have that are not necessarily targeted to any one part of the story, so if you go up, you can talk to them, they'll have personal stories and all performance captured to the level that, that we've done it. That's why, that's why the shoot was a 66-day shoot. I think I've mentioned in the past that's longer than any film that I've done. That's basically big movie uh, shoot length, and it was to get all that material to get it in there. So I think it's going to make, uh, in terms of being immersed in a story, it's uh, going to be pretty amazing. It's going to take a little longer than we'd originally thought, but I think it's worth it to give uh, the guys here in the UK the time to make it and do it right, because uh, I think it will be very special. And, uh, you know, from my standpoint, you know, there's a lot of people here that played Wing Commander a long time ago, it was 25 years ago, and that's the, the test of time, and I really feel that the stuff that we're doing here for Star Citizen and Squadron 42 can be that, and to do that, you you can't, you can't accept anything that's anything 
anything less than the best. So that's what we're, that's what we're working for. Um, here we go. So uh, I think the last one we have the website has gone live now. Um, so game features, character, biography, and game footage. I think, uh, you know, ultimately we sort of feel like Squadron 42 by itself is a whole full game and you're getting started in the whole full game. So in the future, not this year, but we probably will. All you guys at back it get everything now, but later on down the road we may split those out because, I mean, you know, we took something that we thought was some missions and story and made it into this huge thing alongside this other huge thing. Um, so there you go, that's uh, CitizenCon here. I think there was some discussion of, oh, look, a big cake that I'm seeing behind me. <laughs> uh, Mike, are we doing the cake out? Let's or? bring the cake. But, no, bring it, light it up there. Or shall I, shall I finish my cl closing here before we do the cake? Uh, I'm just saying, because all I'm gonna say is, everything that you guys have seen uh, the, you know, the SCE Alpha 2.0 stuff, which we are going to give you guys in the very, very near future, uh, plus the stuff that we've done for Squadron 42, plus a whole bunch of other stuff that we're working on that you guys haven't seen yet, is all enabled by you guys here, out there, watching this, and all the backers. And so we couldn't do it without your support. Uh, and it's really, really appreciated, because uh, I... I'm getting to make the game I've always wanted to make, and uh, I think it's the game you guys want to play. I, I'm pretty sure it's the game all the folks working on the game want to play too. So, thank you very much. And look at this! Come on, guys. Wow, that's pretty awesome. We should do a little video of this. Well, before so we're we three sing, years old. <laughs> before we sing, Chris, if you'd like to introduce the guys from Foundry 42 and some of our founders. Yes. Okay. Here we go. For my. Uh, so, 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 uh, so here we got some of the key, uh, you obviously, you know uh, Ortwin, uh, who's one of the founders of the very beginning. My brother, uh, Aaron, from uh, and you met Carl, and you met Dave, I'll leave right here. So this is Paul Jones, who's the art director of Foundry 42, and all that beautiful art that you've seen, to do Squadron 42, and a lot of some of the Persistent Universe stuff has been out directed by him. Here's Nick Elms, who's the creative director of Fa uh, Foundry 42. Um, so, Squadron 42, and again, a lot of the others I've seen. Uh, we have Phil Meller, lead designer. And Nick and Phil, uh, we all went to school many years ago here in Manchester, so we grew up together. I've known uh, Phil and Nick, I think, since I've been four or five, right? Uh, and we have Derek Senior, who's our lead uh, engineer, um, technical director here at Foundry 42. Uh, and uh, so he runs, how many people, how many engineers do we have here? In? Um, I think we're up to 22, 23. So 22, 23 engineers here in, in the UK. How many designers do we have? There's like 5,000 of you guys, right? By <laughs> <laughs> right, 22, I think you win, right, Paul? How many artists? Right. <laughs> and uh, we also have uh, customer service here, so I don't know where Patrick is back there. So he runs, we have a whole, we have a pretty, we have a pretty big customer service department here, Patrick Pro. Uh, so I'm sure you guys interact with him. And uh, how, many guys, how many people here do we have in customer service now? Five. So yeah, it's, this is, uh, the UK is our biggest studio. There's 130 people here, uh, we're growing. Um, so uh, I, I think it's probably because the weather's never great here, so everyone just stays inside and works. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, it's been amazing uh, so far, the three years so far. I'm looking forward to uh, many more years as we um, not only finish the game, but beyond that, sort of keep enhancing it, keep adding content, and making a, a virtual playground for us all to adventure around in. And I would say happy yeah. birthday, Star Citizen, one way. Should we can sing? Should we sing happy birthday to Star Citizen? Yeah. All right. Hey, right. I'm really bad at singing. Who's got a good voice? Phil, no? <laughs> I thought you could sing, Phil. Well, you, you got some Welsh background. <laughs> Two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Star Citizen! Happy
happy birthday to you. No, oh, blow it up, sorry. I, am I going to get all those all at once? <laughs> okay. You know I'll have my spit over this. <laughs> I'm going to be terrible at cutting it. Who's going to be a good cutter? <laughs> I don't know how to cut this. You, you, you couldn't have sliced this bread away. <laughs> I don't know. Right. All right, give up. Who's got, who knows how to cut this properly? I mean, how am I going to do it? Maybe you go from the corner? Oh, they're going to cut it. Oh, sorry. The, the people working here will cut it. Sorry. Sorry. If anyone has the badly cut bit, that was me. Sorry. Uh, anyway, so thank you guys very much. I think we're still all hanging out, having some drinks, right? Uh, so have fun, thank you um, for supporting, thank you for backing, thank you for coming here. And uh, I'll be happy to hang out and say hi to everyone. So.